Colossians chapter 2 and verse 18. The apostle said, do not let anyone who delights in false humility, and notice this, the worship of angels disqualify you. See, we have to be careful in what we worship. We can't worship anything that's created because we become what we worship. That's why you can't worship things or people, not even angels, because you become what you worship. While maintaining balance, you and I as Christians today must seek to understand the assignment of angels and develop our sensitivity of their presence. While maintaining balance, we don't pray to an angel, we don't worship an angel. While maintaining balance, we have to try and understand their assignment and the role they play in our lives. And we have to develop a sensitivity sensitivity to their presence. Throughout the scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, you find where angels intervened in people's lives. The Bible even says that we have to be careful because they take on human form and there are times when we entertain them and we're not even aware of it. So there has to be an awareness that comes to the church. And I believe that we have shied away from this topic because we don't understand it. I remember probably one of the first books I ever picked up dealing with angels was by Billy Graham. I mean, he was one of the first ones that I ever read a book after years ago. That great Baptist evangelist wrote a book on angels. And, and it's a topic that we've just shied away from. But while in prayer, the Lord dealt with my heart. And so I want to move into this topic today and then next Sunday, and then we'll see where we go from there. But see, while in prayer, Holy Spirit dealt with me concerning angelic assistance. He dealt with me about angelic assistance. So the purpose of this message today is one, to stimulate our awareness of their presence. Number two, to remind us of their purpose. And number three, to strengthen our working relationship with them. For Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 reads, are they, speaking of angels, not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those, say minister for those, minister for those, you and I, to minister for us who will inherit salvation. They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for you and me, to minister for us, the heirs of salvation. So you see, they're sent forth to minister with. Now, I want you to grab everything. I've got to move so quickly this morning, and you're going to have to just grab stuff. And you're going to have to just get the CD or DVD to keep up with this. But you have to know they've been sent. They've been sent with an assignment to minister with and for us. They are here to assist us with our inheritance. For he said they are there to minister for those who will inherit salvation. Our inheritance goes far beyond just being born again. And I know we all agree with that. And so these angelic beings were dispatched with an assignment to help you and I step into our inheritance. All that God has for us, I believe, on planet earth and in, in eternity. And so there's this inheritance that we have to lay hold of. Who wants their inheritance? I, I won't mind. You see, the word ministering here, and the Greek means to render public service to the state, to serve in temple, or to serve the Christ. So rather you're out in the marketplace, rather you're in the house, or rather you're individually, okay, they're there a part of what's happening in your life. They're ministering spirits, okay? They're in the public arena, the sacred, uh, uh, secular, uh, public, sacred, and, and personal arena. They're there in all three arenas of your life to, to assist you. The word minister means one who executes the commands of another. 
So they are ministering spirits. They're in the secular, the sacred, and the personal life. They are there to minister. They're there to execute the commands they've been given. Now, I want you to hold on to that one, and we'll talk more about that later. But they're there to execute the, dem- the commands that have been given to them. They are people that are, excuse me, they are angelic beings that are under an assignment. They're under command. They have marching orders. They've been given an assignment by God, and they're to execute those commands here on planet earth, rather it's in the the secular arena, the sacred arena, or your personal life. They're there to execute those, those commands. So, as individuals and then as a corporate body, we must learn to minister with our assigned angels. And we'll talk more about that later. Assigned angels. We are to cooperate with them in order to accomplish the assignment that's been given to us. We must learn to minister with them. Let's title this Angels on Assignment, part one, Warring Angels. Father, bless the reading of your word. Give us insight, revelatory knowledge here this morning. Help us to understand your kingdom. Open uh, the veil and let us see from time into eternity and comprehend the spiritual activity that's taking place all around us. May we understand the angelic beings, their assignment. May we develop our sensitivity of their presence. and May we learn how to cooperate and to work with them. We pray this, Father, in Christ's name. And everybody said amen. Let's talk about angels, heaven's deputy. Did you know that 68% of Americans agree that angels and demons are active in this world? 68%. Now, I know that's a fact because of what's on television. Now, I want you to... I want you to grab this, and I can't, I, I just don't have time to go in deep into the teaching on angels, but you understand there are, there are the angels of heaven that serve God, and then there are the fallen angels. There's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. And when you watch the kingdom of this world, when you watch television and you watch their media, their outlet for communication, they are very dedicated, very committed to communicating, to encouraging their fallen angels. How many times do you turn on television and you're just amazed at the demonic uh, movies and, and the, the series that you see on TV now? They're, so, they're, they're, they're promoting demonic activity every week. They are constantly acknowledging fallen angels. The world talks more about demons than the church does about angels. The world has a better understanding of demons than we do of angels. They're not afraid to talk about demons. They're not afraid to deal with darkness. They're not afraid to have movies and series on television that deal with darkness and demonic activity. They're not afraid of it. They're not ashamed. Psalms chapter 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. The word angels there in the Hebrew, and it also, it corresponds with the word in Greek, means to dispatch as a deputy or a messenger. So I want you to know this morning that angels are agents of God. He said that here in Psalms 103, you're angels. Angels are powerful. He said that again. Psalms 103, they excel in strength. Angels are assigned. They do his word. Okay? They're assigned. And then number four, angels are deputized. Notice that they heed the voice of his word. God has, in, has not only empowered them, but he's giving them delegated authority. They're deputies of heaven. And they listen and heed the voice of his word. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Notice the word salvation there. That word salvation, leave that up for just a second. Remember, the word ministering there means the public arena, the temple, or your private life. 
And, and that word minister, okay, they're there to minister for you and I. They're there to serve, okay? But that word salvation there, okay, it means rescue or safety, deliverance from the molestation of enemies. They're there ministering. They're there to minister for you and I, for us that are to inherit salvation, to inherit. How many believes that God wants you to be free of the molestation of the evil one? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, the Lord's prayer says. God's people are being molested by the evil one. God's people are being harassed by the evil one. God's people are being molested by demonic activity. God's people are under attack. How many would agree with me that, for one example, depression, oppression, Anxiety, stress, burnout is overwhelming in our society now. How many, how many understands that many Christians, and this is not a condemnation, but it's, it just comes from a heart that's broken for God's people, but how many understands that many of God's people are coping with internal problems with external stimulation? How many understands that many of God's people are medicating just to get through the day? How many understand, guys, if God could pull back the curtain and we could see the, 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 the drug addiction, the alcoholism, the pornography, the, the overspending, the overeating, the, all the external stimulation that we're using in an attempt to deal with internal problems, all the external stimulation that we're using to release endorphins in our brain, which is simply we want to feel happy. If we could see all that's going on in the church in America today, we would be amazed. And that's not a condemnation. That's a, that's a pastor's heart that's broken for his people. People today are just trying to get through. Are you with me? They're just trying to cope. And the enemy is molesting them. The enemy is molesting God's people. And we need to understand. We need to understand that there are angels that have been dispatched. Ministering in the public arena, in the, inside the temple, in your private life, in your family. They are ministering there. And they are ministers, which means they have been deputized. They're under commandment. They've been given orders, they've been given assignment, and they're trying to help you with your salvation. They're trying to help you and I that are being molested. They're trying to help us step into our inheritance in Christ Jesus. To where we begin to understand, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. They're trying to get you and I to step into our identity in Christ Jesus so we truly understand who we are in him. How many is tired of being molested? Yeah, molested. You see, they're heaven's deputy. We serve the God of the angel army. We know this through Psalms 46, 7. The Lord Almighty is with us. That word there, the Lord Almighty, is Jehovah Sabaoth, or the God of the angel armies. We sing that song by Chris Tomlin. He is the God of the angel armies. We have angels that have been deputized. They're following the orders of the God of the angel armies. And they're on planet earth trying to help you and I, trying to help you and I that are being molested by the evil one. But for the most part, we've ignored them. For the most part, we don't understand their function or their purpose. For the most part, we're, we're not even aware when they step into our presence. For the most part, we're not cooperating with them. We're not partnering with these angelic beings that have been sent by the God of the angel army to serve and to help us. For the most part. The world does a much better place or a, a much better job at presenting their fallen angels. We, we're just not very good at it. For some reason... We're afraid of it. We just, we're not sure how to handle these, these angelic beings that God has given to help us 
deal with the molestation of the evil one. So let me just real quick just highlight a few things and then we're going to get on into what I really want to share with you this morning. The God of the angel armies. Number one, you have to know that these angels deal with warfare. Psalms 35, fight against those who fight against me and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let the angel, how many has ever been in a fight? A fight, fight against those Lord who fight against me. Dispatch your angels, your deputies, and, make, and, and may those deputies chase my enemies away. Listen, guys, here's the fact. Here's the fact of the matter. What they start, God's going to finish. Yeah, you need to get that in your spirit. You, you need to step into this understanding of angelic beings and realize that what they start, God's going to finish. God, you fight against those who fight against me. And release your angel, let them run them out of town. Warfare. Do you understand angels are involved in warfare? I want you to understand that they're involved. This can change your life. You're fighting battles you don't need to fight. You're fighting alone when you don't have to fight alone. You have angelic assistants that are under orders. They're ready. They're ready to engage but they're waiting on you and me. First of all, they're involved in warfare. Number two, they're there to protect. Psalms 91, evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. Evil can't get close. Look, but now remember, Jesus said, according to your faith, so be it. You've got to activate this stuff. You've got to engage. Evil, you, you, by faith, you've got to declare evil can't get close to me. Harm can't come through my door. He ordered his angels to guard me wherever I go. I've told you a hundred times, when I get up to pray, I walk through my house and I declare that my home is a sanctuary because Isaiah said he puts a canopy over his sanctuary. I, I declare that there are angels encamped around my home. I put the blood over my doorpost. I declare that God's watching over my family. He's watching over my babies. He's watching over my grandchildren. He's watching over my everything that I am, everything that I own. He's watching over me. I declare that. I declare it. No pestilence will come near my dwelling. No premature death. Too many Christians have died prematurely because we're not engaging, because we're not taking authority. You keep sitting around in your passivity waiting for something to happen, and you can die in your passivity. You better wake yourself up. You better stir yourself. You better climb out of that bed. You better get up from under them sheets and walk through your house and declare that no evil will come near me. No harm will come through my door because my God has dispatched his angels to watch over and guard me. Your family depends on it, sir. Your family depends on it. Stop trying to force. Try, stop trying to force what your guardian angel is trying to resist. Stop trying to force relationships. Stop trying to force activities. There's been times that I've tried to do something. I've tried to do something. I've tried to do something and I couldn't get it done. And I tried and, 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 and there have been times in my past when I felt resistance and I didn't back off. And it cost me dearly. But through the years I've learned, I've learned when I feel resistance, when I feel, I say, I'm taking my hands off of that. Because what I'm pushing against may be my guardian angel saying, Randy, don't do that. Randy, don't do that. Leave that alone. I've had situations, I promise you, I promise you that it brought harm to me and others because I encountered resistance and I felt it and I thought, what in the world? And I tried again. I thought, man, there's something here. I, it's just stopping me. And I, and I, and I wouldn't let go of it. And, and, and then suddenly I push on through and then something happens. Tragedy strikes. And I realized I messed that one up. 
because my guardian angel was trying to stop me. He's trying to stop me, trying to keep me from pushing. And if I would have just paused long enough to listen to him, if I would have paused long enough to pray something through, he could have showed me, but I wasn't aware of an angelic presence. We operate in ignorance so much. So my, my point is, when you are, 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 are encountering resistance, then guys, just let it go for a season and see it may be your angel. Number three, deliverance. They are operating in deliverance. Acts 12. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him. And a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off of him. I remember Brother Clinton, excuse me, Brother Kilpatrick, telling the story. I remember he was only, he, he was somewhere between the age of 12 and 14 years old. He was in Warner, Warner Robins, Georgia, at the Assemblies of God Church there. Uh, his pastor, Pastor uh, Wetzel, was mentoring him and, a, and a, another and a, and a group of, of young preachers. And they met every night at midnight to pray. And this night, uh, they came in and they were, they were praying at midnight as they, they always did. But this night, it was very heavy because there was, there was a group of people in that church that were trying to get, get rid of, of, of Brother, Brother Wetzel. They wanted him out. They were trying to undermine him and they were politicking and they were trying to get rid of him. And, and they wore the old man of God down and he told those young preachers that night, he said, guys, I hate to tell you, but I'm gonna resign the church, I'll be leaving. Well, Brother Kilpatrick, just as a teenage boy whose daddy had left him, left him when he was 12, so this was, he was 14. Left him when he was 12, he's 14 years old, he's heavy because this is, the, this is his spiritual father and a man that kind of took him up and he was so heavy. He was so heartbroken to think that I would lose my pastor and lose it over politics in the church. It broke his heart. And so they were in there and they were getting ready to just end. They were going to cut it short that night and, and they were going to be leaving. And suddenly this was, you know, the old shotgun church and, and, and two doors up front. Those two doors just blew open. And all those men, there was a dozen of them, they all turned and looked and two angels walked in. Not in their head, not in their spirit, with physical eyes. They saw two angels walked in. They walked in. They walked straight like this, like two soldiers. They stopped, and then they turned, and they went to the side, to the two corners, and they stood there. Those men said those angels went from the, from the floor all the way to the ceiling of that church, and they just stood there like two soldiers. And then, as if under command, they turned, they met in the middle aisle, and they walked right out the door. And they left, and they left the two doors open. Well, the old man of God just got up and went to close the doors. Well, all them boys just fell right in behind him. <laughs> and they got down the middle aisle, and when they got halfway down, they all fell out. And they laid there until the next morning. They woke up, and they could, the sun was coming through the doors, and they could see cars spinning by. That Sunday, revival broke out in that church. And all them people that had been causing that preacher trouble left. And that church began to grow again. What happened that day is those two angels came into that room under orders, into the temple, ministering. As ministers that had a command, under commandment, they had an assignment. And they came into that building and they brought deliverance to that church. They brought deliverance. They established the authority of God in that house. Do you understand that? Do you see that? They didn't say one word. They didn't do one thing. They just stood there and they established the authority of God in that house. When an angel of the Lord takes a stand, he will establish territorial authority. You let an angel walk into a room under commandment with the delegated authority of the God of the angel armies. He can position himself and he can establish territorial authority. They bring deliverance. So I want you to understand that these beings that were created by God, they're involved in your warfare. They are there to protect you and your family and they are there to bring deliverance. 
You need to learn to cooperate with them, not pray to them, not worship them. You need to learn to pray to God to release his angels so they can come into your world and fight for you, protect you, and bring deliverance where you need it. And these guys have been deputized. Deputized. First of all, they have and they will use justifiable force. Number two, they have a restraining order. They can restrain the enemy. They have power. You need to realize that. They do have power. And we, we have the scriptures. We just can't go and all that. But you know they have power. Number three, they have jurisdictional authority. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. That's important you know that because Ephesians 4, 27, Paul said, do not give place to the devil. The word place there in the Greek means a spot, a position, territory, an opportunity. Don't give place to the devil. Don't give up your position. Don't give up your territory. Don't give up your opportunities that God's giving you. Listen, guys, you can't defend a territory that you do not know is under your jurisdiction authority. If you don't know you've got territory, you can't defend it. If you don't realize it, Listen, I understand. I went back in my notes in 2006 when I first got here. In 6 and 7, I was preaching then, though we didn't, I don't think we fully understood it. I was preaching then on territorial transformation. I was preaching then on taking the city. I was preaching it way back then. If you don't know the authority that's, that God's given you, if you don't know the territory that God has given you, then you don't know what to defend. You got more stuff than you realize. You got a spot. You got a position. You got territory. You've got opportunity. You have influence. You have authority. But you have to operate in that authority. That's why I'm always pushing on you men and you ladies. It's gender neutral. But I'm pushing on you to step into your home and be the priest of your home. And say, this is my spot. This is my position. This is my territory. This is my place. This is my, the, the sphere of my authority, and you're going to back off of my family. Listen, you need to take authority over your family, over your business, over your church, over your city, over your region. You've got to learn how. The church has got to learn how to be an apostolic center and be a people that will rise up and say, this is our stuff. Yeah. Southeast Texas belongs to us. Amen? Amen. We're here to take authority. We're here to do territorial transformation, but we're giving place to the devil. We've surrendered so much. We've given so much to him and the seven mountains of influence. The seven mountains of influence. We've given so much to him. Rather, it's media, entertainment, the arts, education, family, economics, government. We've given so much to him. We've turned it over to him. And it's time for God's people to understand we've given place to the devil. And you need to go back in and take back what God gave to us. You have to do it. Deliverance. Warfare, protection. But you see, the fourth thing I want you to know is angels battle over territory. Daniel 10. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princesses, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. You see, he, the angels battle over territory. How many believes that the angels, God, God's angels and the fallen angels are battling over southeast Texas? But the angels that are sent by him, they fight for our city. Put it on the screen. Declare that with me. They fight for our city. I don't know that we fully understand the angelic spiritual activity that's taking place above southeast Texas. And we need to understand they fight for our city. They fight for our state. They fight for our nation. They fight. The angel said, I would have been here sooner, but I was resisted. That prince of Persia was resisting me. They fight for our city. The fifth thing I want you to see is the angels watch over churches. Revelation 120. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven lampstands, which you saw, are the seven churches. There are angels that have been assigned to churches. I believe, especially 
especially lampstand churches, apostolic centers, because they have governmental authority. They deal with territorial transformation. They deal with invading the, invading the territory of the enemy and taking back what he stole. And because of that, I believe God gives extra angels assigned to churches like that. You have to understand that there are, I believe, angels that watch over this church. Watch over this church. Angels watch over this church. And we need to understand that. When I come in here and pray, now listen, I started out by saying we have to be very balanced when we approach this topic. Amen? Okay? Have to be careful. Have to be scriptural, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we don't want to get into sensationalism or nonsense. Everybody says amen? amen. But when I walk in this church, okay, because of the years of experience that I've had in the ministry, when I walk in this church on Saturdays or whatever and I'm praying, when I come into the service on Sunday mornings and we're worshiping, I, on a regular basis, I'm constantly looking for angelic uh, presence. I look for the angels that God has assigned to this house. I look because I'm expecting, I'm expecting, I'm looking, I'm trying to see and understand, okay? You have to be careful that you don't get caught up in chasing after angels because the Bible says he comes as an angel of light and you can get deceived, amen? But that doesn't mean that we're not sensitive to their presence. That doesn't, that, that doesn't mean that we don't uh, anticipate angelic assistance, we're, we're people that are learning to be sensitive to their presence and we're watching just to see what they might do. We know they've been dispatched as deputies to serve God's people. So we understand that angels watch over churches. So put it on the screen. They stand with our church. Say it. They stand with our church. Like in Warner Robins, Georgia. Let two angels walk in here and come down this center aisle, and one go to that, that side, and one go to that side, and they reach all the way to the top of that, that ceiling. And it will shift the atmosphere. <laughs> they stand with our church. Number, number six. Angels, or excuse me, individuals have an angel. Matthew 18, be careful that you do not corrupt one of these little ones, for, I'm sh for I can assure you that in heaven each of their angelic guardians have instant access to my heavenly Father. We all believe that there's a guardian angel assigned to each person. I believe that there are angels that watch over churches, especially apostolic centers. I believe there are Angels that war in the heavenlies over a city or a region. Okay. But you have a guardian angel. Now, when you were a little child, we taught you that and you believed that, but you outgrew your angel. You see, when we get mature, we no longer need our guardian angel. So many people have outgrown their angel. But I'm here this morning to remind you that God has a guardian angel that watches over you. And whenever, as I said, you encounter resistance, you need to back up and say, well, that might be my angel. I'm going to leave that alone to see what God might do. So repeat this with me. They guard our families. You see, they fight for us. They watch over our church and they guard our families. Are you with me now? They fight for us. They watch over our church. They guard our families. And we need to understand this. You see, it's time to stop allowing the enemy to molest you and rob you of your inheritance. And remember, they are ministering. They sent as ministers to help you and I that are trying to step into our inheritance. They're here to help us and to help us, help us lay hold of our salvation, which means the cancellation of the molestation of the evil one. These angels are here trying to help you and I overcome his molestation. We need to understand that there is a God of the angel armies that has deputized his angels to come down and to assist you and I with what we're doing on planet earth. 
But so often we keep our angels unemployed for so often they're disengaged because they are waiting, they are waiting to come under orders. Remember the word minister means that they are under orders. They're executing the commands of someone else. And I know that that means like God gives them a command and says, execute. But I'm going to show you here in just a minute how that that is also linked to you and I. That it's, it's like the teaching we do where God gave the keys to planet earth to mankind and, and we're to rule and to reign here. And God awaits you and I through prayer to give him permission to work on planet earth. How many understands that God does, everything God does, he does through, uh, in response to prayer and he does it through the church. What God does, he does through the church in response to prayer. God is waiting on you and I to ask. We have not because we ask not. So these angels are waiting for you to engage them. They have been deputized. They are sent to serve you. They're waiting for you. They're waiting for you to release them into the public, private, uh, uh, excuse me, the, well, the public, private, and the, and the sacred arena. They're waiting for you to release them, to assist you, and to help you. So you need to activate your angels. Who wants to activate an angel? Okay, Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word. Heeding the voice of his word. Heeding the voice of his word. I can show you, I think it's in Job, where it says when you release a word, that word has a voice and it speaks forever. That's why scientists say that when you release a word into the universe, it, it echoes forever. Words have a voice, and it speaks, and it speaks, and it speaks. But these angels heed the voice that you give to the word. They are activated by the voice you give to God's word. So when I'm in a tough situation, I'm in a tough situation, I can activate my guardian angel by saying, he has angels that are encamped around me. That angel steps up and says, that's me. Are you with me? I, as a pastor, when I sense the enemy is fighting the church, I can go to Revelation and I can declare the word of the Lord that there are angels over the seven churches. And I declare that the angel of the Lord that's been assigned to this church is going to take a stand in this house for righteousness. And that angel steps up and says, that's me. Are you tracking with me? As I walk through my house and I pray, I, I quote that scripture. There are angels that are camping out on the four corners of my property. And then, and then when I say that, them angels start popping up their tents. And here we are. They're waiting on you to activate them. And they are activated by the voice that you give to God's word. You say, well, why doesn't God do something? God's waiting on you to say something. Well, why doesn't my angel get involved? Because he's unemployed. Because you won't activate him by giving a voice to God's word. Look at Daniel 10. Then he continued, do not be afraid. Childlike faith activates them. You outgrew your, your, as a, you outgrew your angel. Number three, since the first day, that you set your mind to gain understanding. The angel's talking to Daniel. Number three, you set your mind to gain understanding. They are activated by your knowledge of their purpose. Do you understand why you need to understand them? How many agrees with me that if we don't understand Holy Spirit and his manifestations, if we don't know how to cooperate with him, if we don't know how to work with him, if we are ignorant to Holy Spirit, he can't move in our services. Same principle applies to angelic beings. They are activated by our knowledge of them and of their purpose. We need to study and understand angelic beings. Number four, he said to him, Daniel, you need to humble yourself before God. You need to get this one. I, I'm pushing on you now, worship again. They are activated by worship. How many knows that in Revelation it says that the angels are before him continually praising and worshiping him? So when we start worshiping, I believe angels start showing up. That's why in worship, I look around trying to see if God's going to pull back the veil one time and let me see and from time to eternity. Listen, I believe as we worship, 
we activate these angels. Number five, the angel said to Daniel, your words were heard. Your words, remember he fasted and prayed for what, 21 days? He said, your words were heard. Do you understand that the, the, the prayers of the saints activate the angels? Prayers activate. Daniel was praying and his prayers activated the angel that came. You've got to pray. Number six, he said to him in Daniel 10, I have come in response to them. They are activated by our declarations and our decrees. As we declare the word of the Lord, as we decree the word of the Lord, as we stand as in the home and I declare, I decree the word of the Lord, they are activated by that. He said, listen, I heard your prayer. I saw your worship. He said, I have come in response to that. Put it back on the screen. I have come in response to that. Notice the last one. I have come in response to that. Their worship, their prayer, giving voice to God's word, quoting the scriptures. That angel came in response to that. He'll respond to you. You ought to find great encouragement in that. That the angelic beings that have been deputized by the God of the angel army will respond to you if you'll just take the lessons of Daniel, if you'll just get over yourself and, and, and learn how to worship, if you'll get over yourself and ask, if we'll get over ourselves and quit just speaking negativity and start quoting the scripture, giving voice to God's word. If we'll start praying the answer instead of stating the problem, if we'll give voice to God's word, if we'll do these things that Daniel did, I believe angels would respond to us. They'll say, I hear you. I hear you. I think, I believe angels are waiting to be activated by God's people. And when we do what Daniel does, they step up, they're deputized, they're in the army. They step up and they salute and they said, reporting for service. But they're unemployed because we don't activate them. We don't activate them. Angels are activated when we by faith declare and decree God's word, releasing them to their purpose on planet earth. They're waiting to be released. But the problem is idle words mean idle angels. Idle words equals idle angels because the church will not declare the word of the Lord. Now understand, guys, we're back to declaring the word of the Lord, declaring the will of the Lord, not your will. Remember, we declare on planet earth what God's already decided in heaven. And when I come into alignment with him, when I come into alignment with his will, I'm in alignment with God and I've humbled myself and I've worshiped him and and I've got into the word and I'm giving a voice to the word of God and I'm declaring what God declares and, and and I'm engaging. Suddenly those angels respond to me. They respond to my faith. They respond to the word of the Lord that's coming off of my lips and they step up and report for, for service and for duty. Here I am ready to go. Stephen, come help me. Idle words equal idle angels. So in closing, while in prayer, Holy Spirit dealt with me concerning angelic assistance. And the purpose of this message was to stimulate our awareness of their presence, to remind us of their purpose, and to strengthen our working relationship with them. I want to read Daniel again, but I want to read it in a different translation this time. The angel said to him, do not fear, Daniel. Childlike faith. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand, he began to understand their purpose and he had knowledge. And and you humble yourself. Your, Your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. Notice that. I have come because of your words. I like that reading there. I have come because of your words. So I be I believe this morning. Because we release the word of the Lord. And we're not afraid to talk about angels. We don't worship them. But we're not afraid to talk about them. 
because we understand they're here to partner with us and we need to learn to cooperate with them so that we can fulfill our destiny on planet Earth. Because we do this, I just believe that the angels are being activated. They fight for us. They protect us. They guard us. And they deliver us. They fight for our city. They watch over our church. They guard our families. Wow. Think about it. Angelic beings created by God who look in on our moments like this with bated breath trying to understand who we are and what we're doing. The Bible makes it clear. They gaze in trying to understand mankind and they eagerly await as ministers who are under commandment ready to execute they eagerly await you and I to activate them and they're ready to report for duty but they're waiting on us waiting on us so in this time of acceleration in these days of acceleration now is the time to learn how to work with the angels of heaven to fulfill our assignment on planet earth now is the time now is the time I sense it. Now is the time. To learn how to cooperate with them. We have an enemy that's trying to destroy us. We have an enemy that's trying to resist us. We need all the help we can get. And everybody said amen. Amen. Angels on assignment. Today they're warring angels, ready to fight for you and I.